Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's September 16th, 2024. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined this morning by Zuby Charles and Manif Shodell as we discuss the news of the day. It's presented today by Kanesware, your ultimate authority for all your University of Miami merchandise needs and desires. Um, go to Kanesware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie or Kanesware.com to get all your cane stuff and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Canesware later in the show. Uh, but, guys, uh, first we have to get into Saturday's game at Hard Rock Stadium against Ball State. Uh, kind of interesting game. 750 yards total offense, uh, two-and-a-half-hour lightning delay when there was no lightning anywhere near the stadium. Um, I think somebody needs to take a look at that rule. But, uh, you know, all in all, you got to give the Hurricanes credit for the way that they stayed focused on what they were there to do uh, through that delay. And then they came out with all guns blazing. And uh, Matt Rodell, I'll start with you. 750 yards offense, um, big day for Cam Ward, big day for the receivers. Ball State did not have the speed to even begin to cover those guys. But do we take something away from this resounding victory as Miami gets ready to go to South Florida this week? What are you talking about? It was the greatest win in Miami Hurricanes history. 750 yards, 63 to nothing. Are you kidding me? What is this team? It's amazing. Listen, that's probably how a lot of people are feeling uh, who don't know anything about football because the beginning of the season is the biggest freaking fraud I've ever seen in my life. I just want Miami to crush a good opponent. Florida's down 37 to 10 or something, 37 to 7 in the third quarter to Texas A&M. Uh, you know, does that game even, like, was that even a real win now for Miami? Like, and that was in Gainesville, too. Ball State, FAMU, like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I, I am all in on this team. Like, Cam Ward looks amazing. The defense looks amazing. Uh, even though the secondary is not grading out well, nobody can even throw it into the secondary because the defensive line is so amazing. Um, you know, Jacoby George actually looks like his head was on straight other than a drop pass. Sam Brown only dropped two passes. And looked amazing when he wasn't dropping passes. But no, seriously, I mean, Restrepo, Brown was fine. I'd say a Horton would have had 100 yards if they didn't have that stupid penalty on, um, on the big boy, Markel Bell. Like, this team, to me, you know, just like, just like, you know, if you know anything about sports, you can watch the sport you know the most about. And literally, like, if it's baseball, you can just watch someone having a catch, a kid having a catch. You can know, okay, that kid actually knows how to throw a baseball or not. This Miami football team, regardless of how bad these freaking teams are they've played, they're a really good team with a lot of talent. You can just see it for anybody who's watched really bad football for the last 22 years like Matt Shodell has. But I want them to put that on somebody good. And it's not going to be USF. Like, oh, my God, Alabama, they're only by a point. Alabama turned the ball over three times in 12 minutes and was still winning. Alabama had four first downs that they just gifted as, as penalty first downs to USF, and they still won the game by 35 points or whatever because they had 28 to nothing and 200 yards in the last 12 minutes of the game when they decided to, okay, let's actually try. Like, USF does not have a position edge anywhere against the Miami Hurricanes. Not a test, okay? Virginia Tech will be the first semi-test because Miami's defense will, for the first time, have to deal with a guy who can actually pass a little bit and throw – uh, sorry, pass a little bit and run um, drones. And then they, they get a little more ramp up. You know, Cal is going to be a little more ramp up. And then obviously Louisville is the only, um, you know, that's that's the game. Like, that's the season. Got to beat Louisville. And I just want to get to that game already. Miami's playing so well um, against really bad teams. It's got to look the same against everybody else, right? They're going to be just as good. They're going to kill everybody. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't get excited. As you can tell, I don't get excited over 63 nothing against ridiculous teams. And by the way, like, come on, Mario and company. Like, I get it. You know, you want to win the Heisman for Cam Ward and everything. 
but like throwing the ball 25 times in the first half and only trying to run it seven times out of the first 32 plays in the first half. Like, you know, I get it that you could just run the score up and break records, but like, I, I, that's not for me. And then, you know, if you, for people that watch the TV version, which I also watched, like they literally asked Mario Cristobal at halftime, you know, is Cam Ward going to be still playing? And he said, he'll be playing deep into the third quarter is what he said. Uh, Thank God Shannon Dawson or somebody talked Mario out of that because Miami would have had a thousand plus yards, probably would have won a hundred to nothing. No, because Emory Williams, actually, I thought the story of the game to me, which no one talks about was Emory Williams. He, he graded out higher than Cam Ward, which means nothing in a game like this. But what it does show is he can actually, you know, make some rudimentary reads against really bad defenses and throw pretty accurate passes and make plays down the field. He was 10 for 11, 160 plus yards, 11 nice touchdown four. pass. I thought he looked really good. To me, he's the quarterback of the future right now, unless they get someone out of the portal. I, I, you know, Reese Poffenbarger, I said it in the fall, like, I don't think he's the answer. Thank God they have Cam Ward for this year. Uh, but you need that alpha guy at quarterback every single year. Like, every team in the country knows that. And that's what Miami's been missing for so many years out of the last 22 years compared to other top teams. Now Miami has that. And moving beyond this year, it looks like Emory might have some of that. It's hard to tell against Ball State, let's face it. Uh, but I know Miami co coaches are very high on Emory. And maybe he'll be that guy. Maybe he won't. But there will be a competition after Cam. Uh, you know, but th th that's all my thoughts in a nutshell. Um, have a great day, everybody. It's been a good show. Sorry, Azubi, be nothing to talk about for you. We got to go. You have guys. a great day, everybody. <laughs> I think Lots they love show, guys. Good show. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> I think they love Emory Williams. Uh, I think they have. I think that the, an 11 of 12 performance for 161 yards against the bad team only solidified those feelings. Uh, you know, to me, the uh, the stat sheet was kind of more interesting than the game. I, I mean, uh, I love the fact that the two leading rushers in the game were uh, A.J. Allen and Jordan Lyle. Um, now, you know, they were doing a lot of their work against uh, a team that had about had it in the second half, but uh, still, it was nice to see those two kids uh, get a lot done. Uh, Mark Fletcher had six carries, averaged 8.8 .8 yards a carry. Uh, that's always nice. Um, but one of my concerns, uh, which is, a, to me, a good thing. I mean, we're three weeks into the season, and, uh, you know, what's wrong with having things to work on uh, is the running game. And, Matt, you mentioned that they really didn't run the ball very much in the first half, and I think they, that's because they were doing whatever they wanted in the passing game. And they couldn't get anything really going in the running game. So, you know. They, oh, come on. Yeah. If Mario's going to give up on the run, right, that's what happened. I don't think he gave up on the run. I think he wanted to put up a lot of points. And, of course. And that was the way to do it. Uh, Azubi, if you played against defensive backs like what we saw Saturday, when you played football, you'd still be playing on Saturdays. I, I feel I feel pretty safe saying that. I mean, uh, those guys – couldn't cover anybody or anything. I, those receivers were so wide open. Um, it was a gift wrap day for Cam Ward to put up big numbers for Miami to set school records. Uh, did you think they got anything out of the game? No, for sure. I, th I think they did get a lot of things out of the game and then kind of just touched on that ball state secondary. If I was Miami, I'd be throwing that pill around like a shady pharmacist. I mean, those BBs couldn't cover anything. It was just boom, 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 boom everywhere. But, you know, all the great stats and, you know, 700 yards and million points. The one thing that I was kind of like concerned and scratching my head about was Damian Martinez getting three carries for three yards. You know, coming into the season, he was kind of the, the big running back. He's going to be a great one-two tandem, him and Mark Fletcher. If you told me heading into USF, Jordan Lyle would have more touchdowns than Damian Martinez, I would call you a madman. But, like, obviously, you know, it's great to see the A.J. Allens, Jordan Lyles and all that stuff, you know get in their yard, get in their things like that. But I just feel like Damian Martinez needs to, you know, have one of these games to just really kind of break out of his shell and kind of, you know, show the country who he is. I know he did, you know, okay against fam. You had his first touchdown and things like that. But I still want to see more of him. I feel like he needs to get the ball way, way more. Just obviously I don't know how much, you know, they – whatever to get him to Miami. But I feel like for what he's worth, he should be getting the ball more. But besides that, I think everything else was great. Uh, offensive, great. Defensive, great. I can't wait till Bain comes back. I can't wait till DeMar Brown comes back. Everything looks great. But like Matt said, I'm not taking this with too much, you know, sugar, happiness, and rainbows and saying these guys are the best team in the world. I still think they need to get punched in the mouth to see how they react against any type of adversity. Because these first three games, they've been cakewalks. They've just been running over these guys. So 
I think USF might be a little bit of a test, but I still don't think that's going to be anything insane. I won't, I'm not ready to anoint them as, you know, the best team to ever play in Miami ever until, you know, a Virginia Tech, until they dominate that game, until they dominate a Cal. I was talking to people after the game, and they're like, this team is just they're the greatest team ever. It's like, they look so much. I was like, all right, guys, I'm usually the guy that's like hyping it up and saying all this. I'm like, come down, come back to earth. They do look great, but they really haven't played anyone truly, truly challenging, and truly haven't been challenged yet. So I love everything that I'm saying. I'm not trying to be negative Nancy, but I just want to see them get tested for once before I'm ready to say these guys are the best team Miami's had in the last 30, 40, 50, a million years or whatever you may say. Poor Azubi caught Shodell disease. I feel terrible. I don't know how you caught it through the computer screen. That's awful, Azubi. How do you feel? You feel you feel like I do? You feel miserable all the time now or I just do, sometimes? I no, I just, I'm just like, I was telling Gary this the first game. I just like don't know how to feel like they're so good. Like now I have to be, like, you know, when they're it's bad, like, somebody had to be, you know, happy and nice. But now they're good. I got to bring them back down to earth. But in all okay. seriousness, I just want to see them really, really. No, I don't want to see them face adversity. I want to see how they handle adversity, which is something they haven't done yet. And I think they will handle it in a great way and kind of push through it. But I just want to see them do it before I, you know, ready to say this is the best language team ever. Imagine if you were us and you've been through what we've been through for the last 20 years. You know, you've been going through all the stages of life, you know, getting out of diapers, puberty, all that crazy kind of stuff. We've been sitting here in misery, okay, like year after year after year while you've been you know, all excited growing up and all that stuff, you know, but, uh, yeah, so we don't know quite how to act either, to be honest with you, Zuby. But, uh, listen, I think Martinez is probably a little banged up. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, you know, they didn't bring him here to carry the ball three, three times a game. He was the, he, he, he was the franchise running back at Oregon state. Like they wouldn't, they didn't, they wouldn't destroy his career like that. Uh, you know, he'll be back, I think at, 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 at some point and, uh, him and Fletcher will be carrying the load. Uh, but uh, I like the fact that they had the young guys backfield. You know, I, I, I really did. I like, you know, the the Jordan Lyle, Chris Johnson backfield. I think that gives them a lot of different options. I mean, Shannon Dawson's having to really get creative here with all. The, they've got so many guys and they all. If they're, if they're not contributing, they're not, they're going to be miserable. And he's got to find ways to get all these kids involved. I mean, we saw what, what, what Johnson can do. I mean, but he's only going to get a few opportunities a game right now. And that's got to be enough for him. And if it's not, you know, then he's not going to want to be here for a long time. And, uh, you know, so this is a challenge for Shannon Dawson to create an offense. He, he finds a play for Riley Williams here. Um, Arroyo obviously is the number one tight end, but in these games, you know, they're looking to get other guys involved. And, uh, the thing I like is they're spreading the ball around. They're getting a lot of guys involved and hopefully they are maintaining what clearly is a very good culture that they have on this team right now. I mean, when you see a kid like AJ Allen coming into the game late and he's, uh, you know, he's sitting there and he's playing as hard as he was playing to uh, uh, in the uh, fourth quarter of that game, that tells you that your culture is in a, a pretty, pretty darn good place. Um, you know, a couple other things that stood out to me is I, I think that they were trying to get Sam Brown going. It's his third game as a hurricane. And he's another one that they brought here to put up big numbers. And he's got the ability to do it. He's just very uneven in his performance right now. He's dropping some balls. He's not finishing plays like he did in the Florida game. Uh, it's been a little bit of a rocky first quarter of the season for Sam Brown, but uh, this is a kid that has enormous ability and uh, enormous athleticism, and uh, they are going to need him at some point this season. There's no doubt in, in my mind. Uh, you know, I, I thought Jacoby George looked incredibly athletic uh, on a few of those plays last night. It's hard to read because Ball State was so slow, but – uh, I really believe they're going to need Sam Brown at some point down the road. And, and it looked to me like they gave him eight targets. So they were, they were trying to get him going. He had uh, him and Jacoby had eight targets each. That was by far the most of all the receivers. So there was a concerted attempt by Shannon Dawson and Cam Ward to go to Sam Brown in this game and just start getting them going and start building a connection there. And uh, for the most part, Sam did okay. I mean, he dropped the ball or two. 
uh, which was not great, but he, he had five catches, 44 yards. It's a start, you know, um, 38 of the car of the yards were after the catch. So, you know, they're throwing him a lot of bubble screens and things like that. But, but uh, I thought that was good that they were trying to get him a little bit more integrated into the offense, but uh, this will be a continued battle as we uh, go forward. Uh, that's going to be very interesting. So we have um, obviously just enormous amounts of coverage on the website uh, for you um, today. And, and, um, we obviously had a, had a ton yesterday. I've got a mailbag going with the fans. Um, we obviously take a look at the pro football focus grades and, uh, and have our usual whole lineup of game coverage. So if you haven't caught up on all that stuff, um, make sure you check it out. But we also, um, sent Matt in the lab as we always like to do on Sundays and, uh, had him take a little bit of a look uh at just you know where miami is what they got out of the game and um so one of the things on the website today is an opinion piece by matt on how miami still has a lot left to learn about themselves uh and the schedule is very favorable as we know there's there's there'll be a few tough moments along the way but if miami takes care of business they're going to be in the ACC title game. They are going to be in the college football playoff. Uh, I, you know, right now, uh, they would have to work really hard based on what we've seen so far this season, uh, not just from the Hurricanes, but also from their opponents to screw it up. But Matt, uh, you know, you gave it a close look, uh, put it all under a microscope without giving away your entire story because we do want everybody to go to the website and give it a look. Um, just your thoughts of the big picture for the Miami Hurricanes right now? Well, just to be clear, nobody wants to read my story, so I may as well give it away. But, you know, I didn't really listen to much of what you said, but I think you talked about the culture being right at some point during that diatribe. And then not two breaths later, did, did, did you mention the culture and saying how it was it getting in good shape or something like that? Or am I making that up? No, I did. Okay. I, I, no, I said I and think that, it's in a pretty good spot based yeah. on what I saw that. And, and then not two breaths later, without even realizing it, you said how Miami had to make a concerted effort to keep Sam Brown and Jacoby George happy. Naming no, the two they, players who are most concerned, who, the reporters and the know, outside people, are most concerned that maybe happy. they are the ones who could perhaps be causing problems being unhappy. So no, I, said, I, don't I, know, said, I don't know how that's not a, uh, a conflict. Excuse me. I said nothing of the sort. Jacoby I, George, yes, you pretty much Jacoby did. George has been a model citizen this year, has not done anything wrong. He's doing a great job. You and said they Sam made a concerted Brown, effort. You said they made a concerted effort to get those to the ball. To get Sam Brown the ball. I thought they did, yes. And Jacoby I George. They I thought they were both you said they were both targeted eight times. He's been getting the ball all along, Matt. But I thought they did make a concerted effort. I'm just saying, effort. I found it interesting. You said they made a concerted effort in this game to get they those did. two guys the ball because neither of them have gotten on track. After well, the first Sam, now, Sam Brown, if said, now, if you had said they want to show opponents that other guys besides Xavier Restrepo can be weapons, and so that gets the other teams in the future either. worrying about them, great. But that's not yeah. what you said. You said the culture is great, and they made a concerted effort to get these two guys who might be upset they're not getting the ball enough, get them the ball a lot. Well, that's all I'm saying. Sam I'm, Brown, I'm, I'm totally wrong. Put this way. Sam Brown came here to be a dude, okay? He didn't come here to be a pedestrian. Correct. Okay. He came here to be a dude. Correct. He got here late. He didn't participate in the spring practice, so it has been a battle for him. There's no, there's yeah. no disputing that. But it is important. Azubi, I don't care what Matt says. Let, let me, let me, let me discuss this with you. We, Nobody you, cares what I say. You're not the only one. Excuse me. I'm gonna let me. Can I silence you for a minute, please? Um, so, uh, I mean, Jesus, like, what's wrong with him? Uh, Sam Brown, would you agree? I mean, it was obvious to me in that game that they were making a concerted effort to get him going and try to get him better integrated into the offense. Did it look that way to you? Yeah, no, for sure. I feel like there was a lot more balls, specifically for Sam Brown, whether that be a screen or, you know, a quick little route to get him open and make him make some moves in open space. But, yeah, like you said, I do think he came here to be a dude and kind of that, I feel like the, the reason we're not seeing him as much as, you know, we expected in the offseason or, you know, annoyed enough to be the wide receiver threes is, the development of Isaiah Horton. I feel like Isaiah Horton's just like, hey, you know, I've been here for three years. Uh, this is my spot as much as it is yours. And they're just going at it. And Isaiah Horton is getting the better end of the stick right now. And kind of one thing I, for some reason, I remember very vividly is throughout the whole offseason, 
Cam Ward kept saying Isaiah Horton, Isaiah Horton, Isaiah Horton, Isaiah Horton. Yeah. So me hearing that now, I'm just like, all right, it makes sense why he was saying, I think Zay's going to have this type of year, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. He's doing it. And I just feel like that's kind of not holding Sam Brown back, but I feel like Isaiah Horton's presence on the field, him commanding the ball too, because he's another mouth that you have to feed that's been successful this year. I feel like him, is what he's doing is kind of, you know, not letting Sam Brown get to where he wants to be. But I feel like that's a great problem to have. You have two – you know, excellent wide receivers three. I think they're wide receiver three A and wide receiver three B or whatever how you may say it. But I do think last game they try to get Sam Brown the ball a little bit more. But I think Isaiah Horton's kind of not holding him back, but just commanding the ball just as much as he would at that wide wide receiver three spot. I like having you on this show. It gives me a license to just silence Matt for a few minutes and give us all. A little bit of relief. But Matt, you did write that story. Let me hit the unmute button here and bring you back in. All right, listen. Azubi and I just established the culture's fine. Okay. There's no issues. There's no negativity. Everything's good. They, they they all got a chance to eat on Saturday, got a chance to do some things. The culture seems like it's in a pretty good spot. Now, the let me get back to my original question that you didn't answer. The big picture. The big picture of Miami, um, you say that the Canes still have a lot to learn about themselves. What do they have to learn? I mean, it's pretty obvious. They haven't played anyone real. So until you play someone real, you don't even know what you have to learn, right? I mean, it's like if you if, if you equate it to math, you know, so far they've been doing addition and subtraction, right? They're playing simple uh, opponents that you can just easily figure out. Uh, at some point, you're going to be playing a, you know, a multi. I, when I took it, it was called multi-dimensional calculus. Now they call it multi-variable calculus. But at some t- at some point, that's the level you need to be at. And until you try to learn multi-variable calculus, you can't just say what you understand or don't understand about it, right? So the question can't be answered until we find out any warts that come about by playing the Louisville's of the world, the at Cal's, maybe even a Virginia Tech that can test the secondary or just the, even the, the defense, the run defense against the quarterback run and things like that. Um, so all I did in my article. Um, was look at the remaining opponents because the first three opponents, let's face it, you know, throw them out the window a bit. They all seem pretty terrible. Uh, and and I think the I think when when this season's over, I think we will look back and we'll say these were probably three of maybe the four or five easiest games on the entire schedule. Okay, just that's how it's going to wind up looking. I think. Uh, now, with that said, you know, Cam Ward now is the Heisman favorite, right? There's a lot going in Miami's favor, right? Three and zero. Oh, all the momentum's there. The rest of the ACC looks pretty bad. Miami's not playing. Uh, they're not playing Clemson, right? They're not playing um, a couple of other ACC teams that are getting votes, right? They're not playing BC, North Carolina, uh, that are getting votes in the polls. The only ones they're playing that even are getting any votes whatsoever in the polls uh, is North. Is, is sorry, Louisville is now number nineteen, and Syracuse and Cal are among others receiving votes. Okay, Cal's like fortieth in the country if you do the math all the way down to the end of the AP poll. Um, So like, that's it. You know, those are the only teams that anyone in the country thinks are any good in Cal's 40th. So you beat Louisville. That's why I keep saying Louisville's it. That's the whole season, you know. Syracuse is the last game of the year. If you're telling me Miami's going to be 11 and 0 going to that Syracuse game, you're not going to convince me Miami's going to lose to Syracuse. Okay. You're just not. Syracuse is still Syracuse. I don't care what, what, what happened in 2017, okay? Same That's scenario. A different team, different coach. That was a mirage. If you think this is the same mirage that was, we were talking that year about how that was a mirage because they'd win every game by one point, three points, four points against bad teams. If that starts happening to Miami, uh, you know, then we can discuss it being a mirage. But right now, Matt Shodell, the pessimist, is not saying it's a mirage. Matt Shodell, the pessimist, is saying this team looks like it's for real but has not been tested. So you don't know. You don't know what Cam Ward is going to do when there's people around him because it hasn't happened. Will he start fumbling again like he did his last four years with 46 fumbles? I don't know. Has he, you know, has he developed a different acute awareness of how to protect the ball? I don't know. His hands still look the same size to me, which is small, which is what caused this problem in the first place for him. But anyway, I went through every opponent. I looked at what they've done through their three games. In some cases, they only played two games. I broke down their national rankings for total offense and total defense for each of those teams, right, where they rank nationally. And then I give my analysis, which means nothing because I'm an idiot. But if you want to pay for the website and read the stupid story, feel free to do so. What I will point out, and this is not my opinion. These are facts, okay? 
is that of the nine remaining teams on the schedule, six of them rank outside the nation's top 60 in total defense. Okay? That means Cam Ward's going to win the Heisman, people. Put your money on it. They're not playing anybody good on defense except for probably Louisville. Okay? Six teams outside the top 60 out of the final nine teams, and two of those are outside the top 100. On the flip side, uh, only four of the final nine teams on offense are ranked outside of the top 60. And, I, you know, there's a bunch of quarterbacks on these teams that all, for the most part, can make plays. I mean, I'm not going to name them all, but they're all pretty good quarterbacks almost across the board for all the remaining nine games. You know, the USF quarterback has really had trouble throwing the ball for sure. I mean, he's averaging like 120 yards a game passing, but he can run. You know, he's got a little dual, dual threat to him, and he was able to pass a little bit better last year, so maybe he'll get a little of that back this week. I don't know. Uh, but so yeah, as you look at it, you know, and, 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 and my favorite line, I'll read one line from the story since no one's going to read it anyway. This was my favorite line of the whole story. And I made this up myself. I take full credit because Gary never helps me with anything. Uh, this is the Florida state analysis. Okay. First of all, they're ranked 128th in total offense and 76th in total defense. And then I write analysis. Uh, there's a new adjective in the dictionary for quote, really, really bad. And it's simply Florida state. That's, that's the only line you need to read from the whole story. That's the only line that I actually thought of that was somewhat original. The rest of the story is nonsense. Don't bother reading it. Uh, so there. I ruined your day, Furman. I gave everyone the entire story like you didn't want because you shut me up and put me on mute. Now we're even. <laughs> they, they were horrendous. I mean, I, I had a chance to watch a little bit of their game during the rain delay. Uh, and, man, I mean, yeah. their lack of effort was disgusting. I mean, I don't understand how a team can go undefeated last year and be this bad one the next season. Uh, you know, it's something. It's called remember. the transfer board. By the way, did people not remember I said Florida State was not going to be good this year heading into the season because they replaced fourteen guys? I did a whole story talking about how these polls are nonsense and just are based on the prior year's record. And I used it as an example, Florida State, because it was you an did. entirely new team that replaced great transfers with guys that we had no idea if they'd be at the same level and didn't seem to be at the same level. I mean, we literally talked about that on this show. Uh, but yeah, that's the other did. concerning thing here. Like, Miami now is getting all this praise, number eight in the country, you know, Kim Ward's a lock for the Heisman, blah, 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 blah. When, when the media starts talking about stuff like this, it's like a hurricane a week away, and you're in the middle of the hurricane's path. You know it's not coming to you, so you're celebrating. It never goes where it's supposed to a week out. That's like... I feel like that's the way it is with the media when they say this is what's going to happen and we're three games into the season. That's really the only concern I have is that things never wind up the way the media says they will and they're saying Miami's going to win the ACC championship. They say Miami's going to get a first round bye. They're saying Cam Ward's going to win the Heisman and that really scares the F out of me. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. I'm not well, kidding. That's my uh, biggest concern. I mean, you want the biggest concern about the Hurricanes? That's the biggest concern because it never goes the way the media says after three games of the season. Zuby, I apologize. Z. He's eating up all your airtime. But uh, I don't want to talk anymore. Put me back on mute for the rest of the show. I don't know why I'm on the show. Azubi does such a good job, Gary. People want him on the show. They don't need they don't need this. They love I mean, you seriously. They love, they love you that. No, they do not. They say that to punish me, Azubi. Anyone who posts in the messages, we love Matt. Oh, don't kick Matt off the show like he wants. It's because they freaking hate me and want me to suffer. It's the, I'm not joking. That, that's why they say that stuff. They don't like me. But um, anyway, as I was saying, so yeah, Florida State was horrendous. And, and, and they got big problems up in Tallahassee. And obviously, they have massive problems in Florida. Now that a bunch of boosters have come up with some money to buy out Billy Napier. They're only three games into the season. I mean, God, I wish I wish some of these guys would throw some money our way, Azubi. I mean, like, jeez. Like, they just, like, give money away. Like, it, it's like Ed Orgeron comes out to practice all the time. He's happy as can be. He's got a nice tan, a beautiful wife. He's, like, carries on about, you know, man, they gave me $17 million to, to leave. And I was like, what door would you like me to walk through? Well, Billy Napier is going through the same thing right now in Gainesville. Like, he seems totally – it looks to me like he's totally disengaged from that team. They were totally unprepared for their game against Texas A&M. Uh, they have an NCAA investigation going up there, and it's starting to look like they may try to use that as an excuse to make Billy Napier negotiate a settlement with them and take a lot less money than I think the $25 million that they would owe him under normal terms of a buyout. So um, it's going to be 
pretty chaotic and ugly up in Gainesville. There's no doubt about it. Um, and here are the Miami Hurricanes who have been floundering along for all these years, who now are by far, it seems, the most together program in the state of Florida. Um, and Azubi, you've, you know, you've covered all this recruiting the last couple of years. I mean, you know, we kind of saw it coming. It seemed like they were doing a good job. But uh, this transfer portal hall that they put together this year with all these guys coming through for them has really kind of, you know, been the, the, the cherry on top of the Sunday, man. It's like it's like it has taken this program to another level. And, you know, Matt makes a legitimate point and sustaining this after this year is going to be interesting. I mean, they are going to have to hit on some more portal guys next year, I believe. Um, but uh Man, it's like it's it is nice to kind of see it all come together. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think it's hilarious. Uh, the kind of running joke that Miami's always an offseason champion for the last twenty years. Now everything's turning into oh my gosh, maybe they're going to be the ACC champion, or the end season champion. So I think that's awesome. But on the transfer board, I think they're what Miami's doing is a great job of not using the transfer board to build the program but instead use it to, to add to the program, you know, take a position group to another level. If there's, you know, one position group that absolutely needs it, hey, add another piece of that. Like, perfect example, Cam Ward, you needed a league quarterback, you got him. Damian Martinez, if Mark Fletcher was a running back one this year, I don't think people would be mad, but you bolster that room. Defensive line, you had Elijah Alston, you had Simeon Barrow, you had um, Tyler, Barrett. Tyler Barrett to just boost yeah. those rooms. So, And then you have the high school recruiting. Miami finished – you know, last year with another top 10 class, and you're seeing the guys from the 2023 class contribute, the Mark Fletcher of the world, the Ruben Reigns, Francis Malinois, and then you see guys from the 2024 class contributing. We've seen it the last two games with those young guys coming into play. Elijah Lofton has a touchdown. Jordan Law has a touchdown. So I feel like the Hurricanes kind of system or whatever you may want to call it, recruiting is working out just, you know, how Coach Tristan wanted. Base it off high school recruits, build your program off high school recruits, and then when you need some extra kicks, some extra seasons, some extra flavor, Dip in that transfer portal, bringing those guys. Like Florida State, they banked everything on on transfer portal. We see how that worked out. I actually looked back to their 2021 recruiting class, and when I tell you it's like a desert, there's no one from those classes that are making an impact on that team. is actually insane. And Florida, they're just yeah. It, 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 it's like Steven said, he's a tire fire. What do you used to say, Matt? Uh, <laughs> something. It's something with fire and yeah. tires or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, what, what Coach Cristobal dumpster, doing? Dumpster fire. No, I think it's a tire fire. Yeah, it's a tire. tire fire? Yeah. So let's yeah, that could be pretty bad. Dude. Tire fire in Miami's off-season champs. name is living in the season. and Everyone's happy. Rainbow and sunshine's at Coral Gables, so you can't complain. All right. Uh, and that recruiting uh, continues here during the season. Uh, we talked last week. I was getting a little overshadowed by the season. But, man, they are still grinding on the recruiting trail. There is a ton of recruiting coverage on the website right now. We're going to talk about that in a second. But first, let's hear from our friends at Caneswear. Welcome to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. All right, um, Caneswear, man, I'm telling you, if you have not been there yet this season, if you have not gone on their website at caneswear.com, uh, you are missing out. There's, I mean, if you're a Hurricane fan, there, there's just certain things that you, you have to have this season. You have to get a Cam Ward jersey. I don't think there's any question about that. You will be sorry. If he wins the Heisman Trophy and you haven't bought a jersey and they're out of jerseys by that point, uh, you're not going to be a happy camper. So that's uh, that's one thing. And then uh, they have a little bit of everything at Kings where we're talking about T-shirts, jerseys, hats, polos, uh, flags, decals, magnets, tailgate stuff. Um, it doesn't matter if you're shopping for yourself, your wife, your girlfriend, um, even your pet. I mean, they've got something for everybody at Kings where they got every single size for men, women, kids, and babies as well. Uh, I would tell you to go get the, you can get dolphin gear there too, but you're probably not in the mood to get dolphin gear right now, quite frankly, with Tua got, you know, we don't know what's going on with him. And it didn't look very promising once Tua came out of the game either. Well, it was not promising before while he was in the game either the other night. Wow. 
what an ugly uh, night at Hard Rock. But, uh, you know, they they do have Panthers gear and Inter-Miami soccer. They try to take care of you uh, at Canesware no matter what you have. So uh, they're at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Uh, no home game this week, so I'm not going to tell you all about the, the food that you can get while you're at at, at Canesware. Um, but if you don't live in South Florida and you can't get over to their store, you can just go to canesware.com and check out their entire inventory. Um, so 2655 South University Drive in Davie, canesware.com. Canesware, your ultimate uh, source for all of your Miami Hurricanes merchandise needs year-round. Um, all right, Azubi. So I was talking about recruiting, and there was a lot of it this morning. Uh, I mean, this morning and over the weekend, really. And um, those IMG guys came in this weekend. That was a really big deal. What a good-looking group of kids. Um, you know, they were. Uh, give us a little bit of a synopsis. Uh, you spoke to several of them. What? Uh, what? How you felt that the weekend went uh, for those elite players from IMG that came uh, to for the game? I feel like it was a great weekend and kind of you said they lived here. I want to talk about that. When we were interviewing those guys after the game, they're walking by security and security guys they're like they're, those are high school guys. I thought they're on the team. Like these kids are absolutely massive. When you see them, I yes. think six, five, six, 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 four, just massive human beings. And that's what, you know, Coach Cristobal and that staff trying to bring in the program, massive guys like that, that can move really well. And kind of they had them there for, for two days. It was kind of a mini official visit. You bring them in for the game. And then they spent Sunday morning on campus, which I think was absolutely massive, specifically for 2025 five-star offensive lineman um, that is committed to Alabama, Michael Carroll. He got offered by Miami uh, last week, I think about eight or nine days ago. Surprise visit on campus. I spoke with him. He said he wanted to come down here, see if the love was real. And you know, after spending those last two days with them, he really sees that. I think the next step for Miami is bringing back Michael with his parents this time. Obviously, the kid can enjoy the campus, but it's kind of the parents, you know, have a have a big say in that final word. And he said he's going to go back home, talk to his parents, and kind of recoup and really consider everything. Because when he committed to Alabama in the summer, he canceled the rest of his official visits. He committed to Bama. He canceled his OB to Ohio State and Penn State. Now, I think this is his first visit since uh, committing to Alabama and comes to Miami. He likes a lot of things they're doing with the program. He loves the offensive line development, all that good stuff. So I think He's a guy to watch, you know, the next few months, the next few weeks, if they get him back on campus. And the two 2026 guys, Brett Cola, Jay, and Kenai Pepe, two awesome guys in that 2026 class, big time prospects. They've been in Miami a lot. I've seen a lot of Miami football, and they're loving what they're seeing. Coach Cristobal has done a great job recruiting at IMG these past two years, and I think he's going to try to continue that with Carroll in the 2025 class. Gavin Nix is well committed, the linebacker in the 2026 class with those two guys. So great weekend. I don't think it could have went any better for the Hurricanes getting those three guys on campus for two days. All right, and we have tons and tons of coverage on the site uh, for you guys to check out. Uh, allocate yourself some time and catch up on all our recruiting coverage. Uh, we also have a story today on a 2026 receiver out of North Carolina that has gotten an offer. Uh, tells us how his family loves Miami. Uh, so make sure you check out that story on Tyran Evans. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina, where the Hurricanes hope to be going in December for the ACC title game. And then also check out our, um, Azubi went inside the lines with uh, a kid by name of Derek Cooper. He's an athlete out of uh, Hollywood Chaminade High School. Uh, just a great player that a lot of people are saying he's the number one athlete in the 2026 class. Um, Azubi, uh, you had an extended visit with him. Uh, he's been showing a lot of interest in Miami. Um, give us your your parting thoughts after spending the, that time with Derek Cooper. Yeah, I think Miami's a real, 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 real contender in that recruitment. Uh, he first committed to Georgia, which was the weirdest thing ever. He's committed to Georgia for, I think, 24 hours, and then he backed off that commitment, kind of reopened things. And Miami's been in the mix from the beginning till now. During the summer, he took back-to-back -to -back visits to Miami for two camps. And then this past weekend, he was at the Ball State game, and last week was at the FAMU game. He kind of said something funny in an interview. He's like, you know, growing up, you know, I'm only in junior high school. I've only heard like magical fairy tales about the Miami Hurricanes being good. So actually seeing them, you know, be good and dominant is something that's really cool to him. And, you know, Coach Cristobal has done a great job recruiting him. 
Coach Matt Merritt has done a great job recruiting him. The whole staff has really you know, been all in on Derek Cooper for a lot of reasons. High level running back who also plays safety as well. And the cool kind of thing when I asked him, I said, hey, who do you compare yourself to? He said, I kind of play like a Sean Taylor type of guy that just dominates wherever you put me. And that's what I keep wanting to do. So he said a lot of great things. And, and you know, you can go watch that for yourself in that inside the lines with him. All right, and Zuby does a great job on uh, those features with these high school kids. So make sure you, you check that that one out, and uh, you can go back and look at several of them if you want. I mean, they're 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 fun. They they have a they have a good time filming them. So make sure you check that out uh, today. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now and you like the show and channel, hit your subscribe and like buttons. It does help us with the algorithms uh, at YouTube uh, in growing our audience and introducing more people to Cane Sport and the you know our our video offerings on our YouTube. Uh, channel. If you're not yet a subscriber to Kane Sport, man, more than anything, your subscriptions allow all of us to do what we do every single day to try to enhance your fan experience. So uh, head on over to canesport.com. Please, please, please join our community fans. Uh, your subscriptions are very much appreciated. Uh, we thank you guys for starting out your day with us this morning for Matt Shodell and Azubi Charles. I'm Gary Furman. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time.